Apache Beam is built to handle large amounts of data. But what happens when you need to group data together or even work with multiple data sets? Let's go over a few different ways that you can join data in Beam. To get things started, let's look at a simple example grouping data on a specific key. We'll use some data from an e-commerce website that shows which items a user viewed. Each row in this P collection represents a user viewing a specific item from the store. The first column shows the ID of the user, and the second column shows a unique ID of the item that they viewed. If you're just looking for a count of items, you don't need to do anything fancy. Using Beam's count aggregation does exactly what it sounds like and counts the number of elements. Of course, you'll probably also want to look at each user independently, so you can count per key to get the number of items each user looked at. While that's fine for getting the number of elements, you might also want the actual elements themselves. That could give you an idea for what types of item each user was most interested in, so you could give personalized recommendations. For that, you'll want to use group by key. Group by key is a beam transform that will take a P collection and group all of the values for each key. With the key of user ID, group by key gives us a list of all the items that each user viewed, so now we can use this information to do further processing in beam or another system to generate recommendations. After all, it's pretty easy to see that user one is into cameras. Grouping by key inside of a single P collection is simple enough, but what happens when you join that collection with even more data? Let's take a look at another set of example data. Now, we're looking at a P collection of users and the physical stores they've bought things from. Just like before, we have our user ID as the first column and the store ID as the second column. However, the store ID doesn't give us much information to work off of, does it? That's because the store information is stored somewhere else. This pattern is sometimes called relational data, where the ID is used as a reference to another collection or table where the other data is stored. Here, we're storing some additional information for the store, like the ID number, for the point of sale system and the address of the store. In order to get the data joined together efficiently, you can consider how much data you're looking to join with your primary data. We know that we'll have lots of items in the first collection, which grows each time a purchase happens, but our store information won't change nearly as often. In fact, the store data can probably fit into memory, which means Beam can efficiently hold onto our store data as a side input. This is similar to a broadcast join in other systems. Remember that Beam is designed to handle distributed and large data processing, so using a side input keeps the data in memory on the workers and avoids needing to do a shuffle operation on the data. Joining our user order data with our store side input gives us the user ID combined with the store information we need. Now we can hand this off for further processing. But what would we do if we wanted to join with the order information as well? If our orders data set is too large and won't fit into memory, a side input won't work. For that, we'll need to join larger sets of data. There's actually a few different ways Beam allows for making joins, but we recommend using schemas whenever possible. Schemas provide a type system for Beam records that are independent of any specific programming language type. In our example data, we can use the order ID as our key. In Java, our schema for the purchase data might look like this, where we have different fields for our collections, including the user's ID and the order ID. We can combine that with a schema for orders, which will also include the order ID as well as the products they purchased. Joining these together using order ID as the key will return rows that contain all the information from each collection, which is perfect for further processing. We'll have a link in the description for more information about schemas and how to use them. If you're not able to use schemas, you can use co-group by key. The data is aggregated by shared keys across multiple collections. However, the syntax can be more verbose, especially when you're working with complex data structures. So it's definitely recommended to try and use schemas when possible. 
So far, we've been looking at examples for joining together bounded sets of data for batch processing. But you can still join batch and streaming data together using most of the same logic. If you're working with streaming data like our previous physical store example, and you need to join with a small set of data like the store locations, you can still use the side inputs. You can use a global window for your side input and join it with your windowed streaming data. The side inputs global window will be projected onto the streaming data windows. Even if the side input sometimes changes, like when a new store is added, there's a pattern for dealing with a slowly updating side input. I'll put a link that has some more details in the description, but it's essentially just an additional step to update the side input. Since the data is stored in memory, it's most efficient to only update this when you need to, which will depend on what type of data you're storing. If you're joining your streaming data with something larger than a side input and it updates regularly, then you're looking at it joining two sets of streaming data. In that case, you'll need to consider how your data is being windowed. I know that's a lot of information. If you'd like to get more hands-on and try some of this out for yourself, check out the notebook that's linked in the description. We'll also include links to the documentation for the other topics we discussed today. Thanks for watching.